is it reasonable to believe in God? You know, that question has been debated throughout the history of thought, and perhaps the most illuminating single exchange on it was between an American philosopher and a British scientist. The British scientist, William Clifford, uh, who was the Richard Dawkins of his day, an inveterate atheist, uh, gave a well-publicized lecture that was uh, printed as a pamphlet and distributed and is still read in college classrooms today uh, called The Ethics of Belief, in which he argued strikingly that it's not only unreasonable to believe something without sufficient evidence, without something close to proof, it's actually immoral. I'll, I'll read you some uh, his culminating comments really make his attitude clear. And what he does is use religious language against religion itself. Belief, he said, is desecrated when given to something unproved. Statement uh, to, I'm sorry, I misread it. Belief is desecrated when given to unproved statements. It is sinful because it is stolen in defiance of our duty to mankind. And he concludes with the sweeping declaration, it is wrong, always, everywhere, and for everyone, to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. Now, my personal reaction reading that is, what's it to you, fella? Don't we get to believe what we want to believe on what evidence makes sense to us? But William James, the quintessential American philosopher, the founder of pragmatism, which is regarded as the only uh, new American contribution to uh, the history of thought, um, uh, William James gave it a, a more thoughtful consideration. He was himself not particularly religious, uh, but he was very open-minded. He was a man of science as well as uh, philosophy. He taught physiology at Harvard, among other subjects. And, uh, and as a pragmatist, what he thought is a theory is not just a disembodied set of ideas. It's a set of living thoughts, things you use to live your life intelligently, effectively, successfully, meaningfully. And so when James looked at the actual facts of how we live our lives, what he noticed is that we all the time have to make major decisions on, with, uh, on matters where you can, uh, there's no evidence, uh, so at least not proof, on either side of the belief. Uh, the most dramatic example would be you're caught in a burning building. You got belief A that the safest thing to do is to jump out of the window and hope you don't end up a pile of bones at the bottom, or to run for the stairwell and hope you don't end up a, p a pile of ashes at the bottom of the stairwell. You don't have sufficient evidence to confirm either view, but you need to make a decision. Well, of course, most of life is not a burning building. Nevertheless, we're making very consequential decisions. Is it, should I stay living in this town or is it, do I, would I be happier living in California? I don't know if I'll be happier here or happier there, but uh, I, I have to make a decision because I'll live life differently in this respect either way. Is this the, a girl I want to live my life with? That's a decision. You, you can't have, quote, sufficient evidence either way. It, the decision will have great consequences for your life, whichever way, whether you say, yes, she is, or no, she isn't. And belief in God is like that, a highly consequential decision. You can't prove that there is a God. You can't prove that there isn't a God. And so, in those cases, William James argued, and his essay was called The Will to Believe, in those types of cases, it's perfectly reasonable to make a choice. In fact, it would be unreasonable not to. And it's up to you, whichever choice you, you, you want to make. Well, <clears throat> I find that pretty persuasive, but it seems you need a little bit more, I think. Because suppose someone says, well, if it's up to me whether to marry the girl, whether to believe in God, I'll flip a coin. Heads God, tails uh, atheist. Well, that's not reasonable. Now, fortunately, we actually have more than coin flipping to avail ourselves of. 
you know, some people have an idea of evidence and proof that's way too much based on what happens in the laboratory, some physics laboratory somewhere. We don't live lives in a physics laboratory. We live it in all the uncertainties of the world, in dealing with other people. And fortunately, nature or something beyond nature has endowed us with many faculties for doing this successfully. We have empathy, which is the ability to understand other people, to understand their intentions, to understand their likely behavior, therefore, to know whether you can trust them, um, and um, uh, to understand traits of character, you know, which is very fundamental in living successfully. You never have proof one way or the other, occasionally you're wrong, but we have a pretty good ability over time to size a person up. And we have other faculties that are very similar to empathy, where you just detect the meanings of things. We, we have something you could call life wisdom. You slowly gather it through the course of life. You used to believe some things that now when you look back, well, they were fun, but you know, that was kind of a superficial way to live. There's something a little deeper and more serious about life. You may have uh, the feeling that uh, the types of friends you had before, well, they were fun or they were this or that. They helped you get ahead in your career or something. But you look and there are deeper dimensions to friendship than just those things. And you, you, you discover these things through the course of living. And sometimes, if you pay careful attention, you have moments where you have a kind of sense of the sacred. It may be private, quiet moments. It may be in a religious ceremony of some kind. It may be a moment of birth or death or a transition like love and marriage or, or, uh, or something else. It, it may be uh, out in nature, you know, where you can, where you suddenly just get a sense that will there's something larger. There's a kind of cosmic dimension to life as well. And so you start feeling, well, life has deeper meanings, uh, maybe a higher purpose, even a higher calling. Uh, and maybe you feel not quite alone, that maybe somewhere, somehow, uh, there's a benign presence that cares about you, that's on your side, and, per and that perhaps want something of you. That can happen. And in those cases, these are things it's perfectly reasonable to pay attention to. And they are the kind of evidence that you use that never uh, uh, as even aspires to proof, but gives you glimmers of other dimensions of reality that you need to pay attention to. And that is reasonable, it would be unreasonable to ignore them. Well, <clears throat> there's a second resource we have, a second type of resource. Uh, at a conference, I heard a, a speaker, a young scholar, I believe it was, uh, talking about some topic in religion. And I asked him a personal question. Why do you believe? He thought for a moment and answered, it makes sense of the story of my life. Pretty good answer, I thought. You know, we often think it's, it's part of it, uh, we have a funny idea of the scientific model. We think you've got to gather a whole bunch of data and evidence and so forth until the stack gets high enough that you can call it proof or, or sufficient. Uh, but in fact, that's not how most things work, even science. You find a, a framework that makes sense of things. In science, you call it a paradigm. You find a framework that, where you've got all these data that may not stack up into anything, but they can have a pattern. You can, re, you can see a meaning in the pattern. And if you look at them through a certain framework, belief in God might be that kind of framework. We all need some kind of framework to live our lives. Our lives have a kind of drama, the meaning of which can be hard to discern. But we need some kind of framework that helps us look at the pieces, see what the patterns of meaning are, and live more effectively, more purposefully, more meaningfully. And belief in God might be that kind of framework for you. It's perfectly reasonable to try it 
and see. If this speaks to you, please subscribe and like and share it with your friends. It might be just what they need to hear today.